Hello, this is Lauren from Granite State Yarns, and today I'm going to show you how I make this Pico Edge Cuff. This is my Intervale sock, and this is a pattern that I have available at my website, www.granitestateyarns.com. And among other little details, it features this really pretty and very simple to make Pico Edge Cuff. So you see here, I have done the first few rows of my uh, pattern here. This is the cuff. And I cast on 48 stitches. This is DK weight yarn. And following my pattern for the adult medium size, I cast on 48 stitches, joined them in the round, and then followed the pattern. So for the first six rows of the pattern, it is just a simple stockinette. And then row seven, we switch things up and do a knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over. And that's what makes this eyelet row here. And then on row eight, we switch back to stockinette and we go all the way to row 13. So that is what I just finished here. I just finished row 13 of the pattern and now I'm ready to fold the cuff in so that way I can make this pico edge. I'll give you a little sneak peek of what it's going to look like. So there's that really pretty edge there. So the first thing that I'm going to do though, before I fold over is I have my uh, cast on or the tail from my, when I did my cast on and I have it attached to a darning needle and I am going to weave in my ends first. It's a lot easier to do that now before everything has been folded over and knit in. So I will go do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I have just finished weaving in the end here. Just going to pull that through so that way everything looks like nice and uniform. And then I'm going to take my little snips here and just trim off this end just like that. Okay, now our end is woven in and everything is nice and neat. So now we are going to fold the cuff and knit this next row. So we want to make sure that we are knitting this first stitch here along with the first stitch of the cast on row. So we're going to follow the column down and we can see that right here this is the first stitch of the cast on. It's also the one that's a little bit different from the others because this is where the knot was made when you do the, the German twisted cast on. So I know that this stitch here is the one that I'm going to be knitting on this first stitch. This is the trickiest part is just making sure that your everything's lined up correctly. Otherwise you might pick a stitch from a different side and then the cuff will twist a little bit. So definitely take the time to make sure that you know which stitch you want to do here because it's a lot easier when you're looking at it here than it is when everything's folded inside. When you're using a variegated yarn like this, it does make it a little bit easier because you can see, oh, look at there's that little green speckle and that's the one that I'm going to use. You could also put a stitch marker in there if that would make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, so let's fold it over and we can see that green stitch there. Line it up with the first stitch of the round. Now I'm going to insert my needle here just like I would ordinarily, but I'm also going to insert my needle into this stitch here. Let me make sure that, I, that the yarn is not split. There we go. And then I'm going to knit just like I would ordinarily, but into these both of these stitches. So this one is a little bit tricky because it's a little snug because it was a knot and it looks like I may have, yeah, I pulled up a little bit of the yarn. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this loop through here and then there you go. That is the first stitch. Again, that one's the fussiest one. Things do get easier and smoother as we move along. So for the next stitch, we're gonna, once again, insert here, and then go to the next stitch of the cast on, the back loop of it right here. And once again, sometimes it falls off. It's a little fussy, but with perseverance, you will get through. So there we go, through that back loop of the cast on, and then we're gonna bring it through our first stitch here, and there you go, stitch number two. 
Um, as you're doing this, make sure that you, while it is really fussy and kind of tricky in the beginning, make sure that you're not knitting too tight because this is a cuff and we want to make sure that it stays nice and stretchy. So use a light hand. Don't be afraid to keep things a little bit on the looser side here. Okay, for the third stitch, again, into that stitch as normal. I keep going <laughs> to the wrong place. Uh, and then into the loop of that cast on, knit through, make sure that you haven't split your yarn. There we go. Okay, and there we go, it's number three. So I am just going to continue to move along here, and I think I'm going to do it off camera so it's a little bit easier, but I wanted to make sure that you saw how to do this. Because one of the, this is one of those things that might be a lot easier to do once you see it, rather than just reading about it in the pattern. Okay, I've done a few more stitches here and about halfway done the first half of the cuff. And you can see how everything is really knitting together nice and neatly. Things are staying nice and loose. And you've got this beautiful permanently folded cuff forming with these really cute little picots here. So let's go through and knit a couple of more of these together. You can see that this was the stitch that I just connected. And so now we're going to go over here for the next one. And just continue knitting. Now you can do this cuff uh, in DK weight like I have here. And it also is really beautiful in fingering weight. It's very simple, so if you want to add this to a knitting pattern, you can definitely do that. All you need to do is be sure that it has an even number of stitches for the cast on. And I think that most cuffs probably do. I'm trying to think of an example of when I would have a cuff that wasn't, that didn't have an even number. And I can't at the moment think of one because usually you do a knit one purl one cuff or a knit two purl two cuff or a knit three purl one cuff. So you can definitely convert a current pattern that you have to do this cuff. And this really does make a fun little detail. Um, I've done these in shorty socks, like just a plain vanilla pattern, but done the Pico edge on a shorty sock and it's very cute. And you can also do it on a longer sock. It's definitely up to you. So feel free to experiment with your knitting a little bit. These are the kind of details that once you've learned how to do a basic sock pattern, it can be really fun to just switch up little things. Okay, here we are. I finished the first half of the cuff. And now we're going to turn things around and just do the second half. So you just continue along just as we had done before. Get all my yarn and needles all put together. Okay. So we can see that this was the last stitch here. So now we're going to move into this one here. So same as before, insert the needle into that first stitch and then find the next stitch of the cast on edge. Oops, sorry about that. 
and then just knit them together. And so I will be back when I finish the whole cuff. Okay, and here we are at the very end of this round. Everything has been all knit together and the cuff has been formed. So we're just gonna turn the work and you are ready to continue on with your pattern. Everything's all cleaned up. There's no, um, there's no edges to worry about cleaning. You've woven everything in and we can just continue right along. And that is how we make a Pico edge cuff. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you learned a little something today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you are interested in more tutorials like this, as well as podcasts about my knitting and yarn dyeing. So again, thank you very much. Happy knitting. Goodbye.